Hi everyone, I'm Will from the Anastasia Island Library, and today we're going to go over cutting the cord and how the library can help you do that. So let me pull this up real quickly. And we're going to start this. So cutting the cord, um, what does it mean? I'm sure some of y'all have heard this term before, but we want to go over it. It means cutting the cable cord, if you choose to do so. Um, people usually pursue this option to save money, and you can use an antenna or do what's called streaming. So if you decide to use an antenna, there are some pros and cons. An antenna, after the initial purchase of the antenna, is free, and you get all the live and local TV stations. However, you're limited to locally broadcast channels only. You also can be subject to weather issues, and you run into some issues if you have multiple TVs you're trying to run the antenna off of. You do need an HGTV, um, an antenna, maybe an indoor or outdoor, depends on where you live. And you may need an amplifier if you live in an area not close to a city to boost the signal. So the reason that you need something like an HGTV is I'm sure many of us remember the old rabbit ears. And those are great, but the newer TVs and the newer TV st uh, stations are shared in a different format, so you need that HGTV in order to pick up the signal. So here's some antennas, um, an indoor antenna, which is great for people who live in apartments and cities, range anywhere between 10 to $80. I'm sure they can run more, I did an average. Um, an outdoor antenna is 60 to 150. Um, but they can be more depending on how far you need them to go. So these big ones right here, if you can see my cursor, are for those of us who live in rural areas who may not be able to get stations out of Jacksonville very easily. So if you don't want to do an antenna and you want to stream, this is what we're going to walk you through. And this, I think, is what most people do when they cut the cord or they do some sort of combination. There are people who have cable still who still stream, and we're going to go over what that means. Um, you do need some sort of internet connection. You need a smart TV or a smart device if you don't have a smart TV. So a smart device is something like a Roku, an Amazon Fire Stick, an Apple TV, and a lot of your gaming consoles like Xbox and PlayStation also have the capability to stream some. Now, keep in mind that not all devices, if you're trying to use a gaming console, are able to get a lot of the um, apps you may want. Like sometimes it's difficult to run, um, let's say for instance, Netflix off of some of them because some may have their own proprietary software they want you to use instead. So what is a smart TV? I'm sure everyone has heard about it. And sometimes you're like, you use this term and you're not quite sure what it means. Smart TV is a TV set with integrated internet. It means you can connect it to your home network. Um, they, some of them have microphones and cameras on them too. Uh, you also have the ability to download apps directly onto your TV for streaming purposes. And you don't need a, t a smart TV as long as you have a USB hookup on your TV. You should be able to connect the device into your TV and allow you to stream. Um, sometimes there are issues if you have multiple smart TVs and you're trying to use the same streaming account, and we'll go over that. So there's a ton of different streaming services out here. What I have listed is really some of just the biggest ones, um, but it's not all inclusive by any means. So you have two different types of streaming services. You have a watch on demand or you have watch live TV stations. And so these are considerations you want to think about if you're going to start streaming anything. Um, Amazon Prime Video, Netflix, Disney Plus, uh, the basic Hulu, Hulu excuse me, um, these are all, you look through their library, you decide, I wanna watch that right now, and you don't get any live TV stations. Um, things like YouTube TV, Hulu with the live TV, and Sling TV have live TV station options. So for instance, if I had a YouTube TV account, I could watch a live football game or a live TV show. Um, the basic Hulu does have what's considered live TV shows, but you can't watch them live. You have to wait at least a day for that episode to air. And there's lots of other ones. Um, BBC has started uh, creating their own streaming services. There's BritBox and there's a couple other ones if you're into the um, British TV shows. I personally have not used them, um, but I've heard good things on the reviews, um, primarily from people out of the UK who like to be able to get their shows. And 
um, few people here in the US like them as well. Some of these streaming services also have add-ons um, like HBO or Showtime. So you don't have to have a, you know, one of the fancy cable subscriptions in order to still get HBO if there's a couple of shows on there you really like to watch. Um, some services actually offer a pay extra for no advertisements. Uh, Hulu has that option, I know. Um, so you pay a premium basically in order to get no advertisements and you don't have to sit through commercials for their live TV options. That being said, there are certain cases where you still have to watch a live ad. So some of the purely live, like some of the football games, um, live sports, you just can't get around the no advertisements. So there's some considerations when you're talking about cutting cable or supplementing your cable with other things. Um, do you want to use an antenna? If you do want to use an antenna, how many channels are available in your area? Um, it's, this is going to depend purely on market, um, how close you are to a local um, TV station hub like us. Closest is probably going to be Jacksonville. What kind of oper like stations do they offer? Do you have a smart TV or need a smart device? And here's the big one for most people. What channels or shows do you need to watch the most? And is there anything you absolutely need to see live? Uh, keep in mind that not all streaming services are going to have everything that you want to watch or may want to watch. So sometimes it's cheaper to get rid of cable. Sometimes it's not. So what's your budget? If you're still in a cable contract, you're going to have to fulfill your contract um, unless you either pay to get out of it or you want to continue monthly payments. Your internet price may fluctuate if you drop cable service. You're just going to have to contact your provider um, to see if you have a certain bundle, if that's going to make your internet price go. Streaming uses a lot of data, so you need internet that can handle it. Most mid-grade internet services out there now should be fine for streaming, but it's also something you want to look at before you completely get rid of cable to make sure that internet, the internet you have is able to support your streaming needs. Again, it isn't necessarily cheaper. You know, if I want to have all the streaming services out there, I'm going to pay a lot more for cable than I'm going to, excuse me, I'm going to pay a lot for more of the streaming services than I ever would for cable. Um, you know, the prices fluctuate on those subscriptions as well. Do you want one account or do you want multiple viewings account? Most of them have, you can't watch on one account on different TVs at the same time. So for instance, if you get Netflix and you have a family of four, and you want everyone to have their own account to watch on different TVs, then you need to pay for that extra subscription to make sure all four can have that. Um, again, you're unlikely to have all the channels and services that you want on one streaming service. So you got to go through and really think about what do I want to watch? What can I maybe do without? Um, and if you have live TV options with your streaming, you may run into some buffering issues during large live events like the Super Bowl. If everyone's logged in to watch that, you may have some issues with the real-time speed. So that was all purely cutting the cord and streaming. What I'm showing you now is a stretch to the term streaming. Um, since a lot of us can't get in and get physical items like physical books, um, we're kind of forced to go digital completely for this time being. Now, we hope that once the libraries reopen, you'll do a combination of both um, because we have some really great e-services out there for you. This first one is by OverDrive, and it's called Libby. Now, if you have a desktop or you're used to OverDrive and you want to use OverDrive still, keep using it. Libby, they created, OverDrive created, as a mobile app to streamline um, their, the ability to go through the catalog. So the app's real simple. Um, you download it from your app store, and this little little Libby right here, I'm circling it with my icon, she walks you through the, the I think it's a she, um, walks you through the initial steps. It's maybe like four questions, um, and it's like, you know, typing in or searching for your local library, putting in your library card, and then you're set to go. And we have a lot of great e-books and e-audio books in Libby. Um, our next one is RB Digital. Uh, you can do things like audiobooks and uh, magazines. So even though these things aren't what's considered streaming uh, in the hardcore sense, I wouldn't 
negate these, um, especially the audiobooks. I mean, audiobooks are great to either play on your phone, through a Bluetooth speaker at home. Um, if you're cleaning, if you're doing other things, have something in the background that's different. Maybe you don't want to watch TV all the time. Maybe you want to do something, but you're not in the right place to actually read or you enjoy hearing certain narrators. Um, RB Digital is a great place to look for audiobooks. And the last one we have is Hoopla. Uh, Hoopla has a little bit more, um, I don't want to say variety, but they have movies and comic books. They have audiobooks and ebooks as well. Um, but Hoopla has some limitations on what you can check out. Um, there's no holds in Hoopla, and they have bonus borrows right now that don't go against your checkouts each month. But I would only use Hoopla right now to like, if, you, if you're unsure about streaming TV, um, you can practice with Hoopla for a second because we have movies and see if you like that format before you switch over. Um, but again, if you want to do anything that comes to reading or listen to audiobooks, I would definitely check Libby and RB Digital first. They're going to be the bulk of our catalog. So with that being said, that is a quick down and dirty uh, with streaming and cutting the cord. Remember that you want to check prices, see what you're comfortable with. You may not want to get rid of cable, and that's okay. You may want to have cable and Netflix. You may want to have cable and Hulu. Um, if you have an Amazon Prime account, you already have Amazon Prime Video, uh, and you can check out their selection there as well before you pay for another service but don't forget us over here at the library um with our ebooks and we hope to see you again soon thanks bye